Section 11.3, the tangent line problem. So here we are, we're definitely getting into what the difference quotient is. Well, if you have the difference quotient as is that we did first semester, you were actually finding the slope of a secant line. You had two points on a graph and you were just finding the slope. Secant means that it crosses at two places through a graph. Well, as soon as we put the limit on there, that h approaching zero. It means that the distance between the two points is getting so minusculely close to each other that it's the same point. So we start talking about the slope of a tangent line. So one of the things we're going to be doing now is actually coming up with formulas to be able to find the slope of a tangent line at any point on a graph, assuming that there's actually a line there, or there is a line that we could create there. So here we go. So the tangent line problem, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the definition of the derivative to find this. All right, so we need to remember what the definition of the derivative is. Now remember, the derivative is identified as f prime of x, and it's actually the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient. So it's the exact same thing that you did first semester. We were just practicing the algebra. Now, we're going to get into exactly what this thing means. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with some sort of a formula. Some formula that will help us find the equation, excuse me, the slope at any point on it. At any point at all. Kind of cool. So, now let's just go ahead and plug it in. So it's just like the last section. Now, we've just unloaded the idea of what this actually means. So if we plug this in, Remember, every x is going to get an x plus h plugged into it. And then we're going to subtract the original function as well. All over h. And clean it up just like we normally would. So I'm going to go ahead and pause. Since you and I just did this in the last section, I'm going to clean it up and then we'll see if we match. All right. So I went through and showed all of my steps, canceling out my values that don't have h's on them, which they should disappear, and then setting up my new fraction, canceling out those h's, and it looks like I just get negative 7. So negative 7 is a constant, which means if you find the limit of a constant, it's just whatever that constant is. But now let's just stop and think for a second. The original equation that you had was the equation of a line. The line was negative 7x plus 1 is equal to f of x. If you stop and think for a, just a second, is the slope of that line negative 7? So since it's a line, and every point on that graph is on that line, and every, thing, every single one of those points is going to have a slope of negative 7. Hopefully it makes sense that we get negative 7 at the very end. So this means that f prime of x, or means that no matter where we go, the slope at every single point on that graph is going to be negative 7. All right, same idea here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to fill this one in, but I'm going to sit back. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to work it all out, see if you and I match at the end. And remember what we're doing here is we're finding a formula to help us find the slope at every single point on this graph. Okay, so you'll notice that I was very careful with my notation. I kept my limit as h approaches 0 the entire time until I actually plugged it in. Um, and I showed all of my steps. So I get down to the point where I have 6x plus 3h plus 5. Now I feel comfortable plugging in the 0. I plug in the 0, the limit notation disappears. I end up with 6x plus 5. Now remember, you don't expect to get just a plain old number. You're looking for a formula. A formula that will allow you to be able to find the slope at every single other point. So if you get x's and x squareds in it, or x cubes in it, square roots in it, that's okay as long as the h's are gone. Now, maybe if it's just a number, great. If it isn't, that's okay too. Okay, our last slide. So on these two questions, it looks like they want us to use f prime of x on the previous one. So let's go ahead and bring that back from number two. That was the one we just found. So f prime of x, I think we got 6x plus 5. Okay, so all we want to do is be able to find the slope on the original graph, so that squared, that parabola that we had originally, and this negative 9, 197 is an actual point on there. You'll notice though, pretty cool thing, you don't have to have the y value. 
don't really care about the y value to be honest with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at the x right there. And everywhere I see it, I'm going to plug it in. So I want f prime of my x is negative 9. So I'm just going to do 6 times negative 9 plus 5. Remember, it's a formula. You plug your x values in and find out what the slope is at that point. So if I go through and do that, I'm going to get negative 54 plus 5, which is negative 49. So what this is saying is at this specific point, negative 9 comma 197, the slope of the tangent line is negative 49. That's all it is. All right, the second one. Notice this one's kind of nice. It didn't even give you the y, so you don't have to get confused about, well, am I supposed to plug it in? There's no y in the formula. And actually, there, at this point, there shouldn't be a y in the formula. So let's just go ahead and plug in that 4 for all of the x's. Again, we're just trying to find some sort of a formula here. Actually, we're using the formula to be able to find the slope. And then do our math. So it looks like at 4, whenever x is 4, the slope of the tangent line is going to be 29. And that brings us to the end of 11.3.